The Texture Object Mask is a new type of composite map. It combines two other maps, similarly to the Mix map that you may be familiar with. For a Texture Object Mask, the transition between the two maps, or the mask, is determined by a volume and not by the UVs and not by any kind of procedural texture. We've always been able to have a composite map that was masked by a 3D procedural map like noise, but we had no way of controlling that. And what Texture Object Mask allows us to do is to manipulate the mask in the scene using primitives. I've set up a scene here with an object, this landscape, and a texture object. And the texture object is going to allow us to determine the transition zone between two different maps. There are only three primitives supported as texture objects, plane, sphere, and box. For a plane, the position of the plane and its orientation will determine where the division between two texture maps will take place. For a sphere or a box, the inside and outside of the sphere or box determine where that transition happens. You can scale the primitives and that will affect the outcome, but you cannot deform the primitives with modifiers. It won't have any effect on the resulting texture. So I've got my scene already set up and I've got a material assigned to the landscape. Let's open up the material editor. And here is the material itself. It is assigned and also you can see by the red stripe here that show shaded material in viewport is enabled. So we'll be able to see a preview. Additionally, I've got a couple of maps down here. I've got a noise map that's feeding into a gradient and we're using the source map or a gradient type of map here in order to accomplish that. We're basically remapping the colors and that's gonna be one of the layers. We're gonna also create another layer. And that's going to be a simple noise map. We'll go and create that in the maps, choose noise and drag it over there. And we also of course need a texture object mask map. And here it is, texture object mask, drag that over, assign it to the diffuse color of the material, and then double click on that map and we get its parameters. We need to choose the control object. Click on the button that says none and then I'll minimize the material editor and click on the plane primitive in the scene. And now it's assigned. And you saw that the color changed subtly here. And if we select the object and use the move tool to position it, we may or may not see a preview. If I rotate this, I'll probably be able to see something. So it's not terribly accurate. Don't trust what you see in the preview here. Definitely do a production render to make sure. And wherever that plane slices through that object, we have a transition between right now, just a black and white color. Cool. So I'll restore the rotations to zero and also set the position to a value of 0 0.4 meters in the Z axis. Back to the slate material editor. We can make some of these other connections. We've got the noise. We'll assign that to texture one. And it takes a moment to update. We can see here now that the noise is appearing on the top half of this little material preview. And then drag the gradient ramp or the forest noise onto texture two. Finally, let's just adjust the values of this snow noise here. I'm gonna double click that. I'll call it snow up here. Set its size to 0.5. Set the low value to 0.5 as well. It's going to increase the contrast. And swap the two colors here. Just click swap. And now we should have a mostly white material preview there. We'll do another rendering. Go back to our perspective view and click render. And you can see here now we've got a transition between the snow material and the ground material or the forest. Let's render this camera view that I've prepared highlight that viewport and do a rendering. Here we can see that we're getting a very unrealistic effect because we're just simply cutting off at a certain elevation. Back in our slate material editor, we can change this up. Double click on the texture object mask map. And over here we have transition range. That's the softness of the transition between the above and below. Set that to a value of 0 0.3. 
and then do another render. Now we've got a softer transition there. We can even make this more interesting by varying the shape here so it won't be a straight line. In the Slate Material Editor, in the Texture Object Mask Map, there is a slot here for transition displacement. Now that's not displacement of the geometry like an ordinary displacement map. This is simply varying the edge or the boundary between the above and below. And we can just use this existing forest noise map for that purpose. Connect the output of forest noise to the displaced texture input over here on the texture object mask map. And we can now see that it's listed here. Do another test render. We don't see a lot of effect and that's because we haven't adjusted the displacement amount. Going back in there, we've got the displace amount here. Set that also to a value of 0.3. Once again, do a test render. And we can see that now it's spread out and it's got some variation. What's happened here is we've added the values of the transition map so that now it's extending further into lower elevations. We can compensate for that with one last attribute, and that is the transition bias. We can restore the general location of that transition line by giving this also a value of 0.3. And do our last test render. And now we've got pretty much what we want. If we want, we can go back to our object and move it around. If you have any issues with interactivity moving the object, you may want to switch into a wireframe mode with F3, and that might perform a little bit better. I'll set my Z value here to, let's say, 0.3. And here's the end result after we've adjusted all of the parameters. And that's how we use the texture object mask map in order to define placement of two different textures in a single map channel.